What's up, guys? So today we got a question from Steven who says he's been training for about a year. Says he knows the positions and the attacks that he's trying to use, like the triangle choke, but he says that when it comes time to roll and transition into those attacks, he's telegraphing them so much that basically the people see him coming a mile away, and afterwards they pass his guard and smash him. And so he's wondering if I have any ideas on how to, again, learn to set up the transition to these attacks without getting smashed or without telegraphing them so much, uh, and if there's any general principles I employ throughout my game to accomplish things like this. So, Steven, thank you for the question, brother. And when it comes to telegraphing techniques, basically doing something where your partner, your training partner can see it coming a mile away, I think there's three big components. Now, there could be more and I could be missing some, but here's three to chew on. And I'll tell you how to build them up a little bit. First one is speed of execution. Speed of execution to me is like the speed at which you execute a technique. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean how like actually fast you are, but rather the lag time associated with recognizing the opportunity to go for it or from getting the grip to actually going for it. So like a lot of times people will see an opportunity Opportunity in Jiu Jitsu, I think everyone's experienced this if you've been training long enough. Someone will like, let's say if you're going for a triangle, someone overextends their arm and you can see the triangle and then you recognize it but you don't pull the trigger and the person re retracts the arm back, right? They get back to a good position. So you saw the opportunity for a technique but you weren't able to pull the trigger. That's what I mean by speed of execution. Not necessarily your innate like actual athletic speed or anything but the speed at which you can pull the trigger on your techniques to take, the op take advantage of the opportunities. I'll talk about how to develop that in a minute. The next is confidence. Confidence is super, super important. Your confidence with a technique will allow you to go after it without thinking. A lot of times people have this problem where, just like your message, you said you are getting smashed after you go for a triangle, and so that probably weighs on you a little bit. You wanna go for the triangle, but in the back of your head you're thinking, man, what if I get smashed, right? There's that what if going on, and if that's going on, you're not gonna get the triangle. It's just not gonna happen. I remember one of my things that my wrestling coach said when I was in high school, he was saying that confidence is really important. You could take a guy who was technical, very technical wrestler, but wasn't very confident. You could take a less technical wrestler who was ultra confident, and he would put his money on the ultra confident person because again, he's not constantly in this, this, this turmoil in his mind thinking about well, what if they do this or whatever, right? And so you have to be confident with your movements. I'll talk about how to build that up in a second. The last one is grips. Grips are really important because grips tell you what people are gonna do sometimes before they even do it. One of the things that I do when I go to gyms a lot of times, like just when I'm like doing seminars or whenever I'm traveling, is I'll start by just like playing butterfly guard and just seeing what people grab on. And a lot of times based upon that, I can kind of get an idea of like, ah, this is the kind of pass he's gonna use or he's trying to pass me to this side or he's trying to do this particular standing or this particular low pass. I get an idea of what they're gonna do before they even do anything just based upon the grips. And so that can be a thing to think about. So let's go and talk about it. First off, speed of execution. How do you build that up? How do you build up the ability to just pull the trigger on a technique as soon as you see the opportunity or as soon as you get the grip that you need? Well, I think probably the easiest way to do it and probably one of the simplest ways is some good old fashioned repetitions, doing moves over and over and over again, right? Now that doesn't mean just do 7,000 reps to because arbitrarily to do 7,000 reps, right? That's not the point. The point is with drilling to get very, um, first off, to get smooth with the technique. Like when I mean smooth, I mean being able to fluidly move through the, the technique without many hiccups and to the point where it becomes automatic, where you don't have to think about it. You know, when you, when you talk about someone that's been training a long, long time, movements, chunks of big movements become like one movement to, to them in their brain. Like an arm bar for me is like, that's like one movement. It's so simple. Like I can do it in my sleep. Whereas when I was a white belt, it was like one, two, I was doing like piece by piece. The more you do a movement, the more repetitions you get at, especially if they're good, right? Practice makes permanent. So if you're teaching your body sloppy movement patterns because you're just trying to arbitrarily go fast, that's a bad idea. You want to make sure that you're actually trying to do the movement really well and do it as smoothly and as fluidly and as technical as possible during those repetitions. When it becomes automatic though, you're able to pull the trigger and you don't even have to think about it. And so when you want to actually pull the trigger, so to speak, when you want to be able to take advantage of the opportunities that present itself, that move needs to be drilled in your body to a good degree so this way you don't have to think about it. It just happens. A lot of times for me when I go after techniques in competition, which you know kind of represent the highest sort of stress level for me in jiu-jitsu, when I go for them, a lot of times I'm hitting the techniques and it's like the afterthought 
that I'm actually hitting the technique. So for example, this past year, I did this really cool um, back take from a double underpass. I've been drilling that sucker for years, trying to really work it and get it better, both uh, during rolling sessions and situational rolling and in repetitions of movements. When I hit the move in the, the competition, I wasn't even thinking about it. It was like the opportunity presented itself. I was moving with it. And it was literally after the person was almost, after I almost had their back, that I realized I was doing it. It was just automatic with muscle memory. And so that's important. So you want to develop that through repetitions, both during rolling and things like that, and also through repetitions of just the movements itself. Now, the second one is confidence. So how do you build up confidence? Confidence can be a tricky thing. If you're newer, because you may not have a lot of people that are under you that are less experienced, but if you keep training, eventually new people will come in and you'll have that. But essentially, a great way to build up confidence is to roll with people that are less experienced than you and then take those techniques that you're trying to work on and be very specific with it to use just those techniques to try to improve them. So for instance, if you're trying to get better with a triangle, find the people inside your gym that you can literally just beat with no problem that you have more experience in that are pretty easy for you to beat and try to hit the triangle on those people and only triangles. Try to get better with just that one movement over and over and over again. Now again, maybe they pass or whatever else, but that's fine. You just want to use this essentially, think of it as weightlifting. If we were getting ready to go over to the, the bench press and your max is 300 pounds, or excuse me, uh, 200 pounds, we're not going to put 300 pounds on the bar. It's going to be too heavy for you. But if we put maybe 185, 165, 175, somewhere in that range where it's a good stressful, like it's a good stimulus, but it's not too stressful. We allow you to get stronger, that kind of thing. So what you do is then you can build that up slowly. So what, the way that I always think about it is have your A game and then your play game. A game is the moves that you use in competition and everything else. Play game is the game that you're always trying to work on and develop. And I use that game primarily against people that are less experienced than me. And so that's something to think about. If you're trying to get better with a particular technique, Use a game against those people that are less experienced than you so you can build confidence with the movement because then what will happen is you get this forward momentum developed where you've been hit the technique left and right on all the lower belts. And so then when you go against someone of maybe the same skill level, all of a sudden you're not thinking about the what if because you've had so much forward progress with it that it just feels like it's going to work and then you go for it. And again, it may not work 100%, but you're going to have a more likely chance that it will because of the fact that you have that, that forward momentum going on with it mentally with a technique. And the last thing is the grips. And the grips are interesting because when you're in your gym, a lot of times you're gonna learn the same techniques and you're gonna learn the same way to set them up. So if you're using those techniques, if you start to grab on something in a particular way, they may see it coming a mile away and say, oh, he's doing that setup coach showed us last week. So what you can do is you can get on YouTube, you can get on um, you know, some website, uh, and get like a, a jiu-jitsu instructional. I have some on my website. There's others that do. And you can try to find new setups to different techniques that maybe you already use. Another thing that can be a little bit easier, well, let's say not easier, um, less involved, so to speak, but still tough uh, in some ways, is to simply look at the thing that's going on, right? So for instance, a triangle. What are you trying to accomplish with this particular setup? Well, I'm trying to pull this arm here so the arm is extended and this arm's back so one arm's out by itself, right? That's kind of usually what you're looking for with the triangle. You're looking for the arm to get out so you can triangle the person. Well, great. How could you do that with a different grip? How could you accomplish the same thing using different handles on the person that they won't see coming? So again, if your coach showed one specific setup, well, maybe you could do something a different way, a different hand configuration and sort of throw people off your grips. Um, and that's a simple, it's a simple idea, but I call it sort of flying under the radar because what happens is a lot of times people become conscious, actually subconsciously sort of defensive to certain grips. If every time this arm gets pulled, they get arm barred in this particular way, then they sort of just naturally start to pull back. But all of a sudden, if you start to pull with different grips that they're not familiar with, a lot of times they don't have the same reaction. So just a few ideas to chew on there, Stephen. I know this video is a little bit longer, but again, a lot to sort of throw in there for you that might be useful. But give that a try. Work on the speed of execution through your drilling, confidence with rolling with less experienced people, and then work on developing some different grips for the techniques that you're trying to use. So this way people, when they become wise to your techniques, you can change it up and use a different adjustment or a different uh, setup to it. And uh, thanks for the question, and I'll talk to you guys next time.